Hello, everybody, and good day to you all today. I am talking about Goosebump season number one, episode number three, The Cuckoo Clock of Doom. Now, before I get into anything, I gotta let you know right now that I have been pretty bitty busy. So, a lot of my videos are gonna probably come out pretty, pretty late. I don't know if I'm like in between work and school and everything like that. So, it's just kind of hard. It's kind of hard. So, I gotta squeeze in when I can. Ugh. So, today we're talking about Goosebumps. So, so bear with me. I'm I'm, I'm trying to put them out there as fast as I can, as I can but here, here, here we go. So, in, like, so like I said, today's, in Goose, we're talking about Goosebumps season number one, episode number three, The Cuckoo Clock of Doom. I really do like that title because it makes it seem like it's something really, really, really scary. But it, 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 this episode was a little bit silly. But, but it was still fun to watch as well, too. Also, it kind of like, also had a little bit of a Groundhog Day type of feel on it, but it took a, a, a twist on it. Usually, the Groundhog thing, it, Continue throughout the whole entire series. You got this person stuck in this loop over and over again, and they can't get out of it. And you, you got to figure out what's going to happen. How they going to get his friends involved? What what they're going to do? How they how they going to fix the situation? But they they do manage to fix that problem. But it causes something else, which is very, very, take a, a, took a different take on the situation. Made it made it very very interesting. Because at first I was like this, oh man, I seen I seen this done before. Now we see that now we see how we're going to, now we're going to fix it. But they also did a twist on that as well too, because here we're following James. Who gets stuck? He, he 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 hits his head on the cuckoo clock, and somehow the cuckoo clock curses something because of that, and he gets stuck at the party. And every time he tries to leave the party, he can't leave. Like he 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 tries to leave the party. He go, he, he, yeah, he goes to a portal that gets it sucks him back, and then he, he starts he starts the day all over again. He starts the not not the whole day, but this is where he left off at. He starts that thing all over again, over and over and over again. And when he keeps trying to leave, it, 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 starts, it starts to start back again. So he says, oh my goodness, how do I get out of this situation? Well, this is going to be a different way to tell the story. Because because he's, he's pretty much stuck in the past while his friends are still moving on outside, which is very interesting. So I says, huh, so how are they going to solve this situation if he's still stuck in this time loop in the past? Usually the time loop goes off to the whole entire day and it starts again. And I says, well, then the whole entire day starts again. But this time, and even this time he got, and even when he's like saying what his friends are going to say and doing that too, it still doesn't like snap him out of it until he managed to change it and, uh, and then something else happens where it, because he kept, every time he tried to escape, it caused another version of himself to, to, to exist. So now he got all these dupes of himself causing a lot of, I want to say like major problems. I mean, because this, this, this episode could have got really, really dark. I mean, they could have him do some like really messed up stuff, really messed up people in their heads causing a, a lot of mayhem and damage. But it, it was like mostly, mostly like slight um, inconveniences really and maybe a little bit annoying. But other than that, he says, he almost just says on slight remarks to people, hurt some, hurt some feelings. But other than that, it was like nothing really major, major, major. So like this, you so you wouldn't really know if he was a psycho or not. Like not, not, him, not, not him going around like his dupes, his dupes going around killing people. And that would have been really insane. Like, oh my god, this is this is scary. Oh my gosh, this is insane. And then the way they, when the way he like um they they they, they, they pretty much like say kill them, kill them by, by, by making them explode so easily and turn to like this this yellow slime that smells like some type of fruit, Jolly Rancher or something. So. That was the that only one, one, one ongoing joke they had on on the, on the episode right here too. Right? Make, so it made, made it um kind of light, so that you couldn't so you didn't take it too seriously. Because even the way how the guy was playing it, um, uh, Miles um, McKenna, I think he, I think he did an amazing job playing this part and playing all different different characters. It was still like a little bit of tongue in cheek to it, so so it wasn't that dark and too too scary. Also, like that, you got Isaiah, uh, Margot, and now Elizabeth are now involved now. Becoming more of a team, and you have uh, uh, Isabel realizing that the, that the James aren't the James because she was talking to one of them at at, at our friend at, at his house, and then they were when they were playing pool, and one of them when she hit the, she hit the the, the, the pool ball and it, and it hit him, and he just exploded. He said, "Holy mother!" And that's when she realized, "Oh!" And then meanwhile, you got Isaiah and Margo trying to figure out what's going on as well too, because because you got um Nora who sent them on this path to try to figure out. Who in the world is Harold Biddle? And meanwhile, you got the, the adults, their parents, are trying to act like nothing, nothing's happening. And then the doing is what's going on, and they're trying to um, deny it. And then meanwhile, you got poor Nathan, who's been being possessed by, by Harold and being used. Now, the interesting part about this, though, even though I, I am enjoying the, the main storylines going on through it, I also like this whole Monsters of the Week situation that they have going on with all the different like cursed items they're using to pretty much tell the story. Now, 
it still it, because of these cursed items, it does leave a lot of questions like this: Why did Howard have, have these items in the first place? Was they cursed before he um he died? Were were all the parents involved in some type of weird cult situation or witchcraft thing, and they they got these items to do whatever? Because it looks like Harold has a plan for these items. Yes, he want to get the get revenge on, on the children because of the parents, but it looks like he's using them for for something specific that he's trying to do them for. Like, like he like he look like he even had an order how he wants to, each one to get done, how they how, how get used. Because looks like he's looking for the puppet this time. Look like the, the and, and that, but this somehow that puppet's gone. So he's looking for looking for that. So because the thing is though, all these items are, are have been done have been used. In, in, in previous TV shows, so it, it gives homage to old shows, the old um, Goosebumps uh, television old series, by, by by bringing in this world, by but also doing do, do a slight twist to it, a, a slight change, because it's not they're not just analog stories. I mean, they are like Monsters of the Week, but they, but at the same time, there's a continuous story going on that connects everything together. And you just watch everybody trying to figure out what's going on. Like now, the, the, the funny part about this episode that I thought was kind of off that I, I didn't really like. With the fact you got Nora, who purposely went to Margo to try to help Isaiah, give him, give him the picture of, of, of Harold and say, "Hey, this is the guy," and blah blah blah. blah. And, then they, and then they finally figure out, okay, I, I, we know I dealt who actually knows what's going on, and they go to her and say, "Hey, what's happening? You give us this picture of of Harold Biddle who died." Is he involved in this? What? Why? Why? Why did I see him on the field? What's happening? And she had this. Oh, I can't tell you. I mean, yes, she did have that discussion with the parent. They, they said keep your mouth shut. But at the same time, she went out of her way to let them let them know what's going on and to get them involved in this and send them on this path to, just to say I can't tell you. Which I just. What? What are you doing? Why, why get involved in the first place? Why, why not keep your mouth shut? If you didn't want them to know or or, or or let them know what's going on or help them at all, don't get involved. It's just that simple. That way, the kids would still be lost. They, they, they wouldn't think about coming to you. And then, I mean, they're still they're still come together on their own. But you wouldn't be involved in the situation. So why get yourself involved if you don't want to help? That's just messed up. But it looks like we're going to have um, Margot's mom coming back. You can find out what's going on there. Like, why she separated in the first place. And also, why her father's having an affair with Nora, the person who got them involved in the first place. Got them involved in the first place. I guess, wow. Like, oh, I'm just, now, it has like the funny moments in here as well, too. Especially you got um, Harold possessing Nathan by making him eat worms for breakfast. Like, it was just kind of weird and odd. I just, okay. Odd choice there. I could do it with you. And I really enjoy um, Jason Long's performance in here. Because he, he's bringing like a, like, it's not, it's like a, it, it mostly like his um, his physical comedy aspects to this. I think he's doing an amazing job with that. I really do enjoy his performances that he, that he brings to the table. Like I said, it is dark, and I really enjoy the tone the tone of it. But it still managed to have some humor to it as well too. But at the same time, without being too cheesy. But this episode is like a little bit lighter because you have James here. He's more of um, uh, whimsical type of character as well too. So he's not really that serious. But you also get like little life lessons in here about be, about, about being yourself and not lying to people. All the time, and also lying to yourself because you if you want because you think though he has a crush on this boy, he wants this boy to like him, but instead of just being himself and actually being truthful, he lied. Even though he did get the boy in the end, he couldn't maintain it because he had he had, he had to keep lying all the time. And then when his dupe just, just broke up with him because he because 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 of his lying. And that's why that's why his best friend Isaiah didn't even know who he was because he knows he lies and he knows he like to like change change who his, his attitude and change who he is to fit in or or, or um be somebody else so people don't hate him and so he says I didn't know what version of you what you what this was I I, I just went along with it you never be the real you all the time be yourself and this, and then this confusion probably gonna, we probably gonna solve this a long time ago but it's very interesting though it, it, it Isabella. Who figured it out pretty early because because the whole situation she she went through, and she barely even know James, but because she went through that, it, it opened up her mind a little bit more. But I, overall, like I said, I'm having fun watching the show, enjoying the mystery as well, watching the, the crew finally come together. Also, find it very interesting that how Isaiah and Margot had to have better chemistry than Isaiah with his with his girlfriend. Which I think I think very interesting as well too. It looks like to me that to me, it pretty much already broke up. 
I mean, she was barely in this episode. And when they and when she was in this episode, it was James pretty much telling her, "Well, you're, you're, you're I think your God leaving you for Margot because he barely he barely with you." It was just kind of true. He he is barely with her. Even when things go hard and go hard, hard he doesn't turn to his girlfriend. He turned to Margot, and Margot always there for him. So I just. Like what? I, I, I try to figure out why is he not with her, Margot, in the first place. He, he, he had the most chemistry with her. He, they get on, they get along with well, well, better, better. They, they have history. So I just, why is he with the other girl? Because because you don't really get to know her that well. She's pretty. She seems to cool, but you don't really know her that. You don't really know her, not really. Even through this whole Scooby Gang situation, she's not even involved. Even she went off from the party for the first time. She had like her own adventure thing going on by herself that it, 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 it maybe you pay attention to. So I just, what does she bring to the table? I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't understand. But either way, I'm still enjoying the show. The tone, this tone felt a little bit lighter than, than most, but I, I, I still have fun watching it. So leave comments down below. Let me know what you thought of this episode of Goosebumps. If you haven't watched it, check it out for yourself. Hoping you watch it, you enjoy having to watch it too. So give my channel a like, hit the thumbs up. And subscribe to my channel and share. I really would appreciate it. Also, links down below. Can I show my social media? You want to follow me there? I really do appreciate it as well, too. Also, to my store, I sell things with shirts and socks and notes and whatnot. This is one of my shirts right here. This is my um, bunny shark shirt. Mm -hmm. Many others as well. See some stuff about some stuff. I really would appreciate it. Like I always say, in my dreams of a life, I am the Ninja Rabbit. Uh, peace out, uh, people.